If you are interested in putting a book, one of your books, uh, up on uh, as an ebook, this is stuff that you will need to know. If you want to put in one of your ebooks, let's say you have a new ebook or a, a book that you have previously written and been published as a print book, if you want to put that up as an ebook, you have to make sure you've got the rights to it. Just because you wrote it doesn't mean that you have the rights to it. If you publish this through a press, um, and it's gone out of print, chances are you will have very little trouble um, getting the rights back. Um, it can get tricky. There are books that have gone out of print and yet are still uh, up as ebooks. If that's the case, you may not be able to get the ebook rights back. You may be able to get the print rights back, but not the ebook rights back. Um, how to do this? If you have an agent, contact your agent. I've been published for 22 years. I've written 27 books. I wanted the first four books re reverted to me. And she said, oh, they've already come back to you. And I said, I didn't know that. And she said, well, talk to your agent. And at that point, I thought, you know what? I'm going to do this myself. Uh, it is a matter of control. And I think this is the one thing I, that, as a writer, I've never had. And I wanted it myself. And so from then on, I asked directly. I said, you know, you can send my agent uh, information about the rights, but I want a letter too saying that I have the rights back. It took me almost a full year to get four books back from St. Martin's, and then we've gone on since then, and I've, I have uh, seven or eight back from them now. You have to get the books scanned. You can buy a scanner. It looks like, if you've ever seen one, it looks like a little tanning bed for books. You know, it's got this little thing, and the book sort of sits in there. And it's kind of cool. Um, and I don't know how expensive they are, but it's a lot cheaper to go to someplace who will do the scanning for you. Um, in, my, in my case, I used Blue Leaf. They are inexpensive. Um, there are other places that you can go, uh, www.bookscanning.com, Golden Images, www.pdfdocument.com. Um, you can compare prices. All of them will, um, depending upon the book, they may need to rip the book apart. If you want the book to continue to be intact, um, that may cost you a little bit more. Um, and then once they have uh, scanned the book uh, and they have turned it into usually a Word document, a PDF, um, it, it depends on what you ask for. You've got the rights, you've got the book scanned, or you've got a digital, some kind of digital uh, format, you send that to someone who puts it into the, the two major um, uh, ebook formats, which are Moby Pocket, which is Kindle, and EPUB, which is pretty much everything else. There's a lot to formatting a book, um, and it isn't just you know, looking at it to make sure that it looks right. There's, there, when, when something is, is transferred from one format to another format, it will put in odd things. It, will, it, it sometimes doesn't allow for the correct indentations. And um, it, it, it can be a real mess. And it, can, it's a lot, it isn't difficult, but it's a lot of picky work. Formatting is, is the most labor intensive part and tends to be the most expensive. Um, I'll, I'll give you Rob Sider's uh, email or, or web address. It's www.52novels.com. Another one is, it's already been mentioned here today, and that is Book Baby. They are full service. They've, they've come online, I don't know, in the last few months. I get something from them, too, almost every day. Um, they will, they'll do it all. Um, you probably don't have the rights to the, the cover that was on the print book, so you have to produce a new cover. The print on the cover that's going to be, you realize when you're looking at something online, it's tiny compared to a, a book. That print has to pop. Going to somebody who will do, who knows professionally how to do this, um, someone you can work with, I think is really important because, again, covers sell books and you want to have a good cover. Um, you, can, you can noodle around with this if you want to yourself. Um, I looked at, at iStock Photos and at Shutterstock. There are a lot of stock photo companies if you want to use a photo on your book. Next, do you need an ISBN for an ebook? The answer is yes, you do, and you don't. 
You can put a book up on Amazon and Barnes and Noble um, without getting an, an, ISB, an EISBN. They will assign their own number, an internal number, to those books. So uh, if you're in a hurry and you don't have one, um, you, can, you can certainly uh, uh, put it up there without one. But you really do need to have one. I really believe that you do. Um, they're expensive. You want to go to Bowker? It's www.isbn.org. They're $100 a piece. That's expensive. If I'm putting 12 books up, you can see how I looked at that initially, I know, and I thought, I'm not going to spend $1,200. But you can buy blocks, OK? You can buy 10 for $275. I would encourage you, if you think you're going to be a writer and you think you've got you know, more than a couple of books that you're going to put up, to just get that $275 block. And ISBN stands for International Standard Book Number. It is the way books are recognized all over the world. And uh, I think more and more we're going to see e-books, uh, ESBNs required. The first person I ever heard use the word metadata was Jim. And I had no idea what it meant. <laughs> metadata is data about data. Um, and data about data. It's, in, in terms of your book, it's the title, the author, the publisher, the category, the copyright, the ISBN. That's just basic metadata. Um, and you, that's the kind of stuff you will want and you will need for Kindle. Also, you want to start thinking about keywords. Keywords, if you will look on Amazon or Barnes & Noble, they have tags or keywords at the bottom of the book. And those are the words that if somebody types in a, um, you know, a book, uh, I want to hear um, a book about, or I want to read a mystery about Minnesota. So they will type in mystery in Minnesota. Or, and if you have those keywords associated with your book, your book will come up. You want to make sure that you have review quotes and blurbs, because you get the opportunity to put those up um, on, on Amazon and Barnes & Noble um, as well. Pricing issues. We've talked a little bit about pricing. One thing that you want to remember is it's very easy to go down. And as Libby told us, it's very difficult to go back up. Um, if you price your books at $2.99, anywhere between $2.99 and $9.99, you will get a 70% royalty on that. That's pretty good. Um, below $2.99 and you only get 35%. I, I, I can't tell you what to do. I, I'll tell you what I've done. I started my books off at $9.99. I didn't sell very many. I dropped them to $7.99. I sold a few more. And then I dropped them to $5.99 and $4.99. And I'm selling quite well right now. Value and price today don't go hand in hand. I mean, I've had my editor tell me why she thinks it's very important that, that Macmillan is able to charge $12.99 for, for an ebook and why they don't make that much more. I don't think it's necessarily in our worst interests to have somebody challenging Amazon. They set that $9.99 price, and that's the price that people, anything over that, and people start really getting upset. So I don't know that Amazon is entirely our friend. Um, but in terms of the pricing for your book, you can play with it. You can go in and one day you can be $5.99 and you can do a special on your blog or whatever and say, they're gonna, I'm going to have them at $2.99 for the next two weeks. You know, it, it's, again, it's control. Once you put those ebooks up, you have complete control. You can go back and change whatever you want. You can change the cover. You can go back in and if there's something wrong in the way it was um, uploaded, you can change that. You have complete control. You are the publisher.